Once in a discussion, the Buddha said that all those who are wise and educated will be reborn in higher families of Kshatriyas, Brahmans and the Gahapatis, while all those who are fools will be reborn in lower classes like Chandal or any other such classes. Interesting, isn't it? We never expected the Buddha to actually say this, but he has. This is the reason why we are having this video today about how or to what extent has Buddhism really propagated a classless or a casteless society or is it that we are just having a black and white comparison or a black and white compartmentalization of things? Is Buddhism really a social movement against the earlier Varna order or are we just concluding it too early? That is the purpose of today's video of how Buddhism is related to the Varna system. To what extent did Buddhism try to counter the Varna system and to what extent we find this class-based or caste-based, occupation-based distinction in Buddhism. That is the purpose of today's video. So what we will be discussing is of the various uh, new systems of classification of society that were seen in the various Buddhist texts, which appear to be extremely contrary to the image of Buddhism that has been given to us. So Buddhism as a religion is generally told to us in the history textbooks as a a movement against the Varna order, that the Varna system was becoming too rigid, it denied opportunities to certain classes of society and hence we have Buddhism rising which denied the existence of any Varna order. While this is partially true, but this is not the entire truth because on one side if Buddhism denied the existence of Varna system, it invented its own kind of new Varna system. It is That's the reason why the title of today's video is the old Varna wine in a new bottle. That is how Buddhism in a way repackaged it. And that is what we would be looking at today. Now, the sources of what uh, I would be telling you are essentially all the core Buddhist texts. So in Hinduism, just like we have the Vedas and the Upanishads as the core texts of that religion, in Buddhism, we have the three Pitakas, the Vinay Pitak, the Sutta Pitak and the Abhidhamma Pitak. We would be focusing more on the Sutta Pitak because the Sutta Pitak was composed just after the death of Buddha and his followers compiled all the teachings of Buddha in the Sutta Pitak and the rules of how a Buddhist monk should behave are compiled in the Vinay Pitak. So these two texts form the core of Buddhist philosophy and that is why we would be focusing on what these texts say. Many places it is Buddha himself who is saying something. So that becomes a very authoritative statement on the side of Buddha. So we will be actually looking at the core texts of Buddhism and what they really say about Varana system or what they really talk over the new social hierarchies that they are trying to build. So at the start, I would say that uh, the primary assessment could be that Buddhism is more like a Kshatriya reaction to Brahman dominance. Now why am I saying this? It is because Buddha himself belonged from a Kshatriya background. So if you see the history, Buddha belonged to the Shakya clan, the family of the Shakyas who ruled at Kapilvastu in Nepal. You will find that most of the Buddhist and the Jain uh, monks as well as the uh, propagators of this religion, Gautam Buddha and Vardhaman Mahavir, both belong to the Kshatriya backgrounds. But if this, if this can be said as coincidence. But if you look at the other things that are associated with Buddhism, you will realize what I am trying to say. In the Dighanikaya, we have this very interesting passage. In that passage, we have a young Brahman called Ambuddha. He came to Buddha and he began abusing the Buddha, saying that the Buddha belongs to a degraded clan. The Shakya clan is not a very good clan. It's not a noble clan. Now, what would you expect the Buddha to say? The expected answer was the Buddha would say that anybody from any background can become a good person. His family background, whether noble or not, does not matter. That is how the expected answer from Buddha is. But Buddha says, in a totally different tone, he says that no, no, the Shakya clan is superior to any other clan and Buddha actually goes on to prove how the Shakya clan is good. This passage actually exists in the Dighanikaya. Going ahead, the Buddha also tries to prove why the Khattiyas or the Kshatriyas are superior to the Brahmans 
by saying that if there is a mixed progeny between a brahman and a kshatriya there is a mixed progeny the brahmans will allow that progeny to take part in religious offer offerings and religious processions but the kshatriyas will not allow such mixed progeny to take part in the abhishek or the consecration ceremonies of kshatriyas so since the kshatriyas maintain the purity that is why the kshatriyas are the set this is the word used in the diganikaya so the kshatriyas are set or higher than the brahmans who are called as heen or nich that is how the buddha actually tries to reason out so this gives us a very uh, interesting uh, angle to the fact that the buddha may have tried to establish a kshatriya dominance over the total religious dominance of the brahmans in the buddhist text also wherever the varnas are mentioned you will peculiarly find that in say for example in the vedic text the varnas are mentioned according to the order so the brahman kshatriya vaishya and shudra in the buddhist text you will find the kshatriyas mentioned first so kshatriya brahman ghapati ghapati is essentially almost like similar to the vaishya professions so kshatriya brahman vaishya kshatriya brahman ghapati these are the this is the order in which it is placed so you will invariably find that the kshatriyas are mentioned first or earlier than the brahmans so this broad things that are talked about can make us to conclude that in a way buddhism was like a kshatriya reaction to the brahman dominance but this is not enough if i really want to conclude that buddhism reinvented the varna system there has to be something more about it what is it i am i talking about the thing that i am talking about is about the new occupation based hierarchy that buddhism invented now if you actually carefully look at uh, the certain passages in the sutta pita so there are sub chapters in the sutta pita uh, they are called as the nikayas so the diga nikay anguttara nikay madhyama nikay these are the chapters in the uh, sutta pita and then we have certain passages in the vinay pita also from there we can actually see a three step classification of society that buddhism did and that is what we are going to look at that is the crux of this video you will find that buddhism reinvented the society or saw the society in the form of higher and lower classification so the words in vinay pita also specifically they have used the word ukkat and heen ukkat means is almost like a similar to the word uch or high and heen means low so all the classes of society are now classified as ukkat or heen that is high or low and all the three step classification that we will be seeing there also you will find a high and a low classification in that so what is that three step classification that we are talking of the society is now divided into kul kula the or family so a high kula and a low kula ukkat kula niche kula or heena kula the second classification is kamma or karma so occupation based or profession based higher kamma and lower kamma and the third classification is sipa or shilpa craft specialized crafts so people who are indulged in specialized crafts there also you have higher sipa ukkat sipa and heena sipa so these three kula kamma and sipa these three occupation based and family based classifications there you have a clear cut black and white classification of heena and ucha this is almost like reinventing the new varna system as we would be seeing because if i tell you the kind of occupations and the classes which are involved in the higher kulas or higher kammas or higher sippas as compared to the lower ones you will immediately realize that it's almost like reinventing the earlier varna order so let's go with the first classification that is the kula classification naturally kul means family so the family in which you are born that decides whether you are higher or lower please tell me how is it different than the varna hierarchy where your birth decides your nobility so in the uh, madhyama nikay you have this actual reference to the higher and the lower kulas so which are the higher kulas the higher kulas are khatiyas that is kshatriyas brahmans and the ghapati essentially the first three varnas of the vedic order are essentially the higher kulas and what are the lower kulas buddhist text mention five the madhyama nikay mentions five kulas which are lower what are they chandal that is outcasts vain that is bamboo workers or people who prepare baskets rathakar or ones who prepared the rathas puffaka 
or pukkasa means the person who offered flowers or flower keepers and the fifth is nishad or hunters so if you see these five lower or hinakulas you will clearly realize that these are all erstwhile shudra professions or even the nishads are essentially considered as tribals so all the higher or the ukkat kulas are the erstwhile higher varnas and the nich or the hinakulas are the erstwhile shudra varnas so you will find that this almost becomes like a varna hierarchy but reinvented with a new name this is not enough if you see the buddha in the dighanikaya actually says this that anybody who is wise and educated will be reborn in these higher kulas of khatiyas brahmans and the ghapatis and the person who is foolish will be reborn in these five hina kulas the chandal vena nishad ukkusa and the rathakar how is it different than the varna hierarchy it's a question similarly the same buddha will tell you the uh, essentially in the vinay pitak you will have this passage of colors being ascribed to the higher and the lower kulas so the higher kulas are ascribed the white color and the lower kulas are ascribed the black color we don't know how this kind of racism creeped in but this this is a very intriguing thing the buddha himself actually says this that all the higher kulas that is the khatiyas the bahmans Bam, and the ghapatis they are blessed with all the material pleasures wisdom education higher specialized crafts they are best blessed with beauty and good complexion is what buddha says and this is denied to the lower hina kulas so almost this is like a new varna order which is being propped up so this is the kula classification the higher and the lower kulas let's shift over to the second classification that is the kamma or the karma so the specialized occupations which are considered as good and certain occupations which are considered as bad now in that also you will find that generally uh, the buddhist texts say that this is almost like a, a regional classification this appears in the vinay pitaka so there are certain regions since buddhism in early days was concentrated in the northeastern corner of india that is magadh ang koshal and all these regions so today is essentially bengal bihar jharkhand and eastern part of uttar pradesh these were the regions where buddhism was concentrated in those places certain professions were considered as noble and certain professions were not and on the basis of that you will have the vinay pitak actually saying that there are certain kammas or karmas which are higher or ukkat and certain kammas which are heen or lower what are the higher kammas they are the, the text mentioned three they say the higher kammas are krishi or agriculture vanijya or trading and goraksha as in goraksha or cattle breeding now tell me these three professions vanijya krishi and goraksha who is involved in it it's essentially the vaishya category the traders of that part or the uh, people who are essentially the, uh, the vaishya varnas are essentially involved in this category or specialized or this is considered as good kamma or th- uh, those kammas which are considered as noble and what are the heena kammas or those karmas which are considered as degraded and not to be followed properly by everyone it mentions two it mentions puffa chadaka or the person who offers flowers or essentially a person who is involved in flower business and second is kothak or store room so person who keeps the store rooms is considered to be a heena profession now we don't know why they considered this as a heena profession but they actually mentioned is that these are the higher kammas and these are the lower kammas if we shift over to the sippa part of it or the shilpa or the uh, specialized crafts part of it there the things become even more clear because in there the same vinay pitak will mention that there are certain sippas which are higher or ukkat sippas and there are certain sippas which are heena sippas now what are the higher sippas just see what are they they are considered to be five mudda or mudra so essentially it, it can be interpreted as currency anything related to the monetary business or it can also be mudra since it is related to hands some people also interpret as counting through the hands or counting through the fingers so in any case mudda or which is currency business or number reckoning the second very good or higher sippa is ganana or counting or accounting in general or keeping of books the third higher sippa is lekha or the script writer or write anybody who can write 
द फोर्थ हायर सिप्पा इज राज परिसेन और एडवाइजर टू द किंग एंड द फिफ्थ हायर सिप्पा इज इसन और बोमनशिप एनी बडी हु कैन यूज अ बो और धनुष्य इसेंशियली हु कैन यूज इट इज अ हायर सिप्पा नाउ प्लीज टेल मी हु इज एन एडवाइजर टू द किंग एंड हु कैन काउंट एंड राइट इज इसेंशियली द ब्राह्मण वर्ण द अर्स्ट वाइल ब्राह्मण वर्ण हु कैन इंडल्ज इन द करेंसी बिजनेस इसेंशियली द वैश्य वर्ण and who is essentially indulged in bowmanship it's generally the kshatriyas so even here the erstwhile uh, classification of the earlier society is found here also that all the higher sippas are essentially of those people who earlier indulged in higher who were part of the higher varnas if we look at the five lower sippas the things would become even more clearer about what are these professions and who indulged in those professions what are the five lower sippas the first is charmakar that is tanner or one who indulges in leather business kumbhakar or potter nalakar or the person involved in bamboo the business of bamboo nahapit or the business of a barber a person who cuts hair and the fifth is peshakar or a person who is indulged in weaving these are the five lower sippas now please tell me those Uh, varnas which were involved in pottery weaving barber and all these professions were erstwhile classified as the shudra varnas so if i just have a simple comparison with the earlier vedic system and the recent buddhist system you will find that the earlier vedic system is now just reinvented using new words kula kamma sippa so please tell me how is it really a different or a social movement of how diff- or how is it a complete switch over from the earlier society is a big question you have the anguttara nikaya and the madhyam nikaya uh, they are part of the sutta pitak they are saying that all the kula puttas or kula puttras or young men who are born in noble families they always indulge in those professions which are considered as noble that is the same ganana lekha mudra krishi vanijya these are the noble professions in which the kula puttas are indulged so you will find that everywhere the earlier uh, segregation of society is found in just in new terminologies this is also one of the reason why buddhism could never act as an effective counter to the earlier vedic system and the earlier vedic system continued so you will find that this entire process of uh, challenging the varna hierarchy was not really as pure or as unblemished as we have imagined to be so i've compiled these kammas sippas and the kulas higher and lower in a table which can be seen on your screen just now mm-hmm. so if you see this is the image that i uh, i've created so the classification is three the kulas the kammas and the sippas they are classified as ukkat and hina and all the names that i took just now are there in the table so if you just look at the row of the ukkat or the higher things we have all those professions which are there which belong to the higher or the dvija varnas of the brahmans kshatriyas and the vaishyas and all the hina or the lower kulas or sippas or kammas are essentially those professions which were taken up by the erstwhile shudras so this is what we were talking about as to if this entire process was about challenging the varna hierarchy how is it then you reinvented the same varna hierarchy with new names and continued with the earlier classification of society so the entire buddhist theology is mixed it's not that buddhism openly supported the varna ashram system because the buddha himself has multiple times said that any varna can achieve salvation or uh, nirvana and there should be no uh, opposition to any varna from achieving the salvation you have the sangha the buddhist sangha having all people from all backgrounds joining the sangha so there also buddhism allows people from all the four varnas to join the sangha there also there is no opposition in places where buddha is in conversation with various kings like king prasenjit of koshal he was in conversation with buddha there also buddha says that there should be no opposition to any varna from achieving salvation and just like fire can be born out of any wood any noble person can be born from any family so on one side buddhism says this and on the other side the same buddhist texts have told us about the ukkat and the hina classification of kulas kammas and sippas 
so overall buddhism is a very mixed bag it cannot be really told as a out and out uh, rebellion against the varna order and it cannot be also said as that it, it continued the earlier varna order so it is a mixed bag and that is what various historians have also said so if you look at the views of various historians you will get to know that whatever we are speaking has already been spoken of so let us look at what the various historians said so we have a very noble historian hermann oldenburg he is a german historian in his book the buddha he says or he concludes it is historically untrue to treat the buddha as a champion of lower classes similarly we have richard fick uh, in his book the social organization of northeast india in buddha's time northeast india essentially means magadh anga and all those regions of eastern india there in that book he concludes the development of caste was in no way broken or even retarded by buddhism and that buddha's doctrine did not aim at a transformation of social conditions if we look at what charles eliot said in his book hinduism and buddhism there also he says that while the buddha attacked both the ritual and the philosophy of the brahmans he was less effective as a social reformer and lastly if you look at what emil senart said in his book caste in india he says the conflict between the buddhist and the brahmanas was primarily a struggle for influence and that there was nothing in the buddhist strand which aimed at changing the entire caste system so you will find that generally the historians have also concluded that buddhism was not always a direct challenge to the varna hierarchy while it uh, accepted many aspects of the earlier social stratification and it gave new names to it in the name of kula kamma and sippa so overall the conclusion that we can draw is that buddhism is a is in a gray area we cannot have a black and white conclusion that it's totally varna based and it is totally against varna these two extreme conclusions are not possible in case of buddhism it lies somewhere in between and that is what is precisely never been taught to us in the history textbooks because we have been told to imagine the world in a black and white spectrum and we refuse to accept that there are gray areas in between so hope this video enlightens you about these newer aspects of buddhism since we had the buddha purnima just a few days ago i felt like talking about these unknown aspects of buddhism if you like this video please like comment share and subscribe thank you very much